Hi everyone, welcome back. And this will be the second video for learning Blender for the purpose of making video games. Um, this video is still Blender basics and getting used to Blender in general. So this will really work for any version of um, Blender. Uh, keep in mind though that this playlist tutorial series is meant for the Blender game engine. And so we're using Blender 2.79, not the latest that is out now. Um, okay, so I set up my Blender a certain way, and if you haven't watched the first video in the playlist, I recommend you do that because we did install some add-ons that are really going to help out uh, from here on out. All right, let's dive in. Um, I'm, right, I'm going to go ahead and start by left-clicking and placing my 3D cursor over here in an empty spot, pressing Shift-A, and I'll just go ahead and add in an icosphere. Um, during these tutorials, you'll notice that the keys that I'm pressing are going to show up here in the bottom left-hand corner, and hopefully that will help you out. Okay, so you know that you can right mouse click and you can select any object, the lamp, the camera, and so on and so forth. If you hold down the shift key and the right mouse button at the same time, then we'll allow you to select two objects, uh, or three, or four, or five. So shift, right mouse click is multiple select. Okay, so go ahead and practice that. You'll notice that the control arrows here um, pop up in between them, and that tells you that these two are selected. Okay, uh, grabbing, rotating, and scaling. So select an object, press G to grab, and you can then go ahead and move it around anywhere you want. To be more precise though, you should then press X, Y, or Z and choose an axis. So if I press X, I can slide it along the X axis, and I can left mouse click to accept. Press G again, press Y, and you can go on the green Y axis, and remember left mouse click to accept. And lastly, G, Z, and you can go positive or negative on the Z axis, and there you go. Um, if I shift right mouse click and I select the icosphere, I can now do the same thing with both objects, G, Z, and now I can move both objects. Um, again, on all of the axes, and there you go. If you realize you're moving in the wrong axis, let's say I'm doing GX and I realize, oh, that's the wrong axis, I can still press Y or Z, um, and I don't have to cancel the operation. I can go ahead and just do it right there, and there you go. If you do press G and you get ready to move, and then you realize, oh, I didn't mean to move, you can always press the escape key and just cancel out. Okay, um, undo is control Z. So for instance, if I move this cube downward and then I realize I didn't mean to, I can press control Z and just undo that. Okay, uh, rotate. So if I select uh, the cube here and I press R to rotate, I'll just rotate it here and you'll notice that it's rotating in kind of a weird way as if it's just facing the view here. But if I press R and then I press X, I'll only rotate on the X axis. If I then press Y, I'll rotate on the Y axis. And if I press Z, I'll rotate on the Z axis. And last but not least, scale. If I press S for scale and I move the mouse in and out, you will make your object bigger or smaller. And again, left click to accept. You can also scale on all three axes, so S, X, Y, Y is good for making things like doors, then S, Z, scale it up, and now I can make a door that can go into the house that I'm modeling. Um, I can also scale it on the Z axis and kind of flatten it out, and scale it on the X or the Y axis, and this is great for making things like platforms, steps, um, things like that, ramps. So I could rotate this now on the y-axis, like that, and there you go. Um, and then in your game, you could have a character that runs up this, or jumps and hops from it, so on and so forth. All right, I'm going to go ahead and delete that cube, and I'll just do Shift-A and add in a brand new one. Okay, and I'll X delete that icosphere. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into a big concept 
with um, 3D modeling, and that is the concept of object mode and edit mode. So right now we're in something called object mode. And if you look down here in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see this little uh, button here that says object mode. And if you click on it, you'll see that there are a couple different um, modes here. But just for now, pay attention to object and edit. So you can switch to edit mode just by clicking on the button and then clicking on edit mode. But a faster way of doing it is pressing the tab key. Now, in the first video tutorial, I had you install something called a Pi menu. And so this is the first time you're seeing the Pi menu. So if you press tab, it brings up the Pi menu and you can just choose edit mode right from here. And it is a lot faster than coming down here and pressing this little button here. Um, but again, whatever method works best for you. Um, from here on out, I'll be pressing tab. Okay, so what edit mode is, is it's when you want to work with the pieces or the parts of the object. And that's then gonna allow you to actually model this simple cube into really cool, more complex things. So when you first enter edit mode, everything is going to be selected. All the parts of geometry are going to be selected. All meshes, all objects, all um, objects are going to be made up out of three things. They're gonna be made up out of vertices, edges, and then faces. Okay, so the vertices are these little points that are going all around and you can see that they're all selected so they're, they're lit up. The edges are these lines going in between the vertices, okay, and you have to have two vertices or more to have an edge. And then lastly, um, as long as you have three or more vertices, uh, you can have a face and the faces are of course these here. Um, some people in math would call them um, Polygons, of course, but uh, in 3D and Blender, uh, they're referred to as faces. Vertices, edges, and faces all together sometimes are called geometry, okay? Um, so when you enter edit mode, uh, you wanna get in the habit of pressing A. And when you press A, you're gonna deselect all of the geometry. If you press A again, you're gonna select all of the geometry, okay? So A is a toggle, it's a a double feature um, tool okay so a and sometimes you have to press a a couple times just to make sure you have nothing selected okay all right so now remember you select by right mouse clicking if you want to select multiple things you hold down the shift key and you right mouse click and there you go you have two things selected okay so if I select a single vertex um, I can now do different things to it so I can grab it and I can move it all around Okay, when I grab it, I can then press X and I can move it on just the X axis, the Y axis, and of course the Z axis. I'm gonna press escape to get out of that. If I hold down shift and right mouse click, I now have these two vertices selected. So now if I press G and Z, then they'll both move up and down together. Okay, and there you go. So now I've got something like this, a very simple object. Um, it looks a lot like our theater. Um, at our school um, and this could be a ramp or a console or like a little simple computer on a spaceship or something like that when you're modeling even basic modeling like this always try to think about what the object looks like and that I think um, is a skill that not only helps your imagination but will help your skills as a modeler now once I have these two vertices selected not only can I um, grab and move them but I can also rotate them and I can also scale them as well. Oops, there we go. And I can also scale them. So I can scale them in, I can scale them out. I can go ahead and rotate. And there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press Control Z and undo this. Remember that you can press Control Z multiple times and undo multiple steps, so that's all good. Um, okay, so I'm going to press A again to deselect. Remember, A will select all. A will deselect all. If you have anything selected, press A again, and you will deselect. Okay, so right now I'm in what's called vertex mode, which means I'm only working with vertices. I can only select vertices when I right mouse click on them. Um, but there are also edges, and there are also faces, and sometimes it's better to work with edges and faces. So in the first video tutorial, I had you install an add-on 
um, that was called SB Select 1234. And so hopefully you were successful in doing that. And what that allows you to do is when you're in edit mode, you can press 1, 2, and 3, and you can uh, change the way you select things. So for instance, right now I'm in vertex mode. If I press the number 2, you'll notice the vertices disappear, but that's because I'm in edge mode now. I can now select any of these edges. Okay, And if I select an edge, I can then work with it, and I can then move it and manipulate it. I can scale it. I can rotate it. And there you go. If I press 3 on the, number, on the um, top of the keyboard, I'm now in face mode. And so now I can right mouse click and I can select any of these faces. Face select is the one that you're probably going to use one of the most um, because faces are bigger, they're easier to select, um, they kind of handle a bigger area. And then there you go. And again, I can grab the face and move it along the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis. I can rotate it, and of course I can scale it up, scale it down, and you can make some pretty interesting stuff. Now, so that's um, those are the basics of working in edit mode. Now when you're done in edit mode, let's say I'm happy with this weird shape here. If I'm happy with it, the next thing you need to get in the habit of doing is pressing tab and then going back to object mode. Okay, so for instance, um, let me get rid of this cube, and I'll just bring in um, I'll bring in another cube. Here we go, and then over here I'll put in a um, I'll put in a torus. How about okay? So I've got these two objects here. I'm going to select the cube, press Tab, go into Edit Mode. When I'm in Edit Mode, I'm going to press A to deselect all. Now remember, now that you're in Edit Mode, you can press one to get to vertex mode, two to get to edge mode, and three to get to face mode. Okay. Now, if you press the number four, what that allows you to do is it allows you to actually see through your object, which is really kind of cool. And this actually allows you to select geometry through the object, kind of like you're reaching through. So for instance, watch this. Um, I'm going to press four, and you'll notice that now there's no x-ray there. Um, if I go ahead and I shift right click and I try to select all four of these, there we go. All four of those verts are selected. Um, but if I want to select one of these vertices on the other side, I have to orbit around and I have to then select these as well. Okay. Well, but if I press four and I have sort of the x-ray mode on, now I can shift right mouse click and I can select these front vertices, but I can also select the ones in the back. And so you're actually selecting through the object, which again, it's not necessary, but it's a huge, huge, huge time saver. It just saves you from a lot of work. Okay. Um, again, if you're feeling kind of overwhelmed with all of this information, um, just remember when you tab into edit mode, one is vertex edit, two is edge mode, and three is face mode. Okay. All right, moving on. Um, you can't work on another object while you're in edit mode on another object. So I'm in edit mode on the cube. I can't work on the torus. So what I have to do is I have to tab back into object mode, select the torus, and then I can tab into edit mode on the torus. Again, you can only work on one object at a time in edit mode. Okay. So you'll see this one's a lot more interesting, a lot more complex. It's got a lot more geometry. So Again, in edit mode, get in the habit of pressing A to deselect all. That way you don't accidentally do something. All right, so now I can press 1, and I can get into vertex mode. Now when I do this, um, I can go ahead and I can select some of these vertices here. Let's say I select, um, I select these six vertices, and when I did that, it, selecting six vertices has me select two faces. What would be faster, let me deselect, what would be faster is if I was just in face mode and all I did was shift right mouse click and I could just select those two vertices. So whenever you're wondering, should I be working in vertex mode, edge mode, or face mode, think about what's going to be easier to select. Would you rather select six things or would you rather select two things? The answer is usually pretty clear. 
Okay, now that I have those two um, faces selected, I could press X and now delete gives me a whole bunch of other choices because I'm in edit mode and I have more options. So I'm going to say delete and I'm going to choose faces and you'll see that I actually now have a hole punched into the torus here and you can actually see through it. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, and if I tab back into object mode, again, you'll see that the um, hole is still there. Okay, um, I want to show you a couple other things here. When you have an object like a torus that has more geometry, more faces, if you are in object mode, over here on the left-hand side, you'll see a toolbar over here, and you should see two options that say uh, smooth shading and flat shading. If I choose smooth, you'll see that I get a much smoother object, and that's pretty nice. And then if you choose flat, you'll go back to what you have before. Um, I think while you're modeling, flat shading is the way to go, so you can actually see what's going on with your object. But smooth is, of course, nice to get that nice finished look. Okay, the very last tool um, that I want to go into in this video, and then I'm going to cut the video off, is um, the duplicate command. So when you have something, let's say I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to scale it on the Z axis. There we go. And then I'll scale it on the Y axis, make it a little longer. So maybe this looks a little bit like a step that you would go into on a, on a um, staircase. Okay, so if I select this, if I press Shift D, D for duplicate, um, you've now duplicated it, made a copy, and it's now stuck to your cursor and you're in grab mode. So you can grab it and put it wherever you want. Now, usually you're going to want to press X, Y, or Z, because if I just leave it right, let's say I say, okay, that looks pretty good for making a staircase. Well, if I orbit around, you'll notice that it's actually off. It's not quite where it was. And this is where 3D kind of lies to you. From this angle, it looks like it's pretty good, right? It looks like a logical step where you'd go up. Even from this angle, it looks pretty good. But when you rotate around, when you orbit around, you'll see that it's, it's, it's off. So what you should get in the habit of doing is, when you duplicate an object, Shift D, and you know you're in grab mode, then press X, Y, or Z what axis you want to move on. So I'm going to press Z just to go up, and I'm going to bring it up to about here. Then I'm going to go ahead and move it on the X axis so I can start making a staircase. So I'll just press G, X, and I'll move it on the X axis. And that looks pretty good. Now here's how you can do um, stairs pretty quickly. If I Shift right mouse click, I now have both stairs selected. Now with both stairs selected, press Shift D. I've got now two stairs selected, right? And I can then press X and move it on the X axis. I can then do G, Z and move them on the Z axis. And now you see that I can go ahead and start doing that. And then you basically just repeat this. So again, if I do Shift right mouse click, I now have four stairs selected. I'll duplicate these four, and it goes faster and faster. So now I can do Shift D, Z to bring them up, then G, X to move the staircase this way, and left mouse click. And again, if you make a mistake or didn't move it enough, just do another um, grab tool, and then there you go. Okay, so the very last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a staircase that turns a corner here. So I think on this one, I'm going to select this last one here, and I'm going to scale this one on the x-axis, SX, and that's going to make a landing. All right, so most steps do a landing like that when they get to the top of a staircase. Then I'm going to shift right click and select all of these regular steps. Then I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. I'm going to press X, oops, Y, see, there we go. I'm going to press Y to slide them off to the side. I'm going to zoom out with my mouse wheel. I now want to rotate these. So I'm going to press R. And again, when you're brand new to 3D, just try all three of the axes, and you'll figure out which one it is. So do I want to rotate this on the x-axis? Not really. Do I want to rotate it on the y-axis? Eh, not really. Z-axis? And you'll figure it out. So I want to rotate it on the uh, z-axis, because I want it to be going something like this. Okay. I'm just going to do that. Then I can go ahead and grab it, orbit my view, get it right over here for the landing, and then I can go ahead and grab it, 
move it out, move it up. Sometimes it is easier to just use those little arrows um, for the right, uh, for a very small movement. Now, if I look at that, it looks pretty good. Um, it's not bad. I could maybe rotate it a little bit more. So maybe I'll press R, Z and just rotate it a little bit more just so it looks a little bit better. So just try to get used to um, those functions. And again, a couple little tweaks here and there. And now you'll see that I've got a staircase that turns here and it's starting to look a little bit like an MC Escher um, drawing. Okay, so those are the basics. Object in edit mode, um, duplicating, rotating, scaling, grabbing, um, and those are the basics. So hopefully um, those feel uh, fairly comfortable, but practice is going to make it more comfortable. Um, okay, I, I kind of lied and said that was going to be the last thing. I'm going to show you how to save properly because saving inside Blender is a little bit different than um, other apps. All right, so I want to save this and I'm going to call this uh, staircase. So I'm going to come up here to file and I'm going to choose save. That part's easy. This is the weird part because this screen looks really, really strange. Um, okay, so here's the easy thing. Look over here on the left hand side. You're going to see desktop. For most of you, your desktop's going to be fine. So click on desktop and then everything that you see here in this kind of um, stripe area here, that's everything that's on your desktop. Right now I just have one folder. If you have a really messy, unorganized desktop, this is going to have a ton of stuff in here. Okay, so this is the important part. I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what I'm focusing on. So this first box tells you what folder you're about to save it in. Okay, so I'm saving it onto my desktop folder. Okay, right here, this bottom box here that says untitled.blend, this is where you actually choose what the file name is. So you want to just click inside there and you call it whatever you want. So I'm just going to call this uh, staircase and then I'm going to press the return key. And when you do that, it adds in the dot blend and that just tells the computer uh, what kind of a file this is. Okay, so that's um, naming it there. Then to save it, you have to click over here and click on save blender file over here. Okay, and if you make a mistake, you can always hit cancel. Okay, so I'll hit save blender file and then there we go. And the name of the file actually shows up here um, in the middle um, of your uh, of your blender window okay all right so that's it um, I'm gonna stop the video here because we're just over 20 minutes um, and again to get good at this um, just practice remember key things are tab to get into edit mode if you can't get into edit mode it might be because you don't have an object selected okay so make sure you right mouse click select an object first tab to get into edit mode choose edit mode um, now if you press tab and you don't see this pie menu it means you didn't install the pie menus okay and it's not the worst thing in the world if you don't have the pie menus but they do make make life a lot easier inside blender it's my opinion um, remember that you can only be in edit mode on one object at a time um, and then when you're done editing press tab and get in the habit of going back to object mode so you can work with the whole object Okay, uh, good luck and happy blending.